magic word Here in the secret kindergarten The world's best show for kids is starting The secret kindergarten radio show Use your ears and your imagination We're going to play, we're having fun And this is Gino from The Secret Kindergarten. And thank you for tuning in to Revolution Radio. The number one listener-supported radio station in the whole world. So please help support our efforts and airtime by visiting the station's donation section on our website, revolution.radio. That being said, welcome back to The Secret Kindergarten. I am your host, Gino, as in G. No! And we're going to play some music. Let's go! Yay! So the seeds in the ground below At the sun and the rain See the flowers grow I can see in front of me A daffodil as pretty as can So the seeds in the ground below Add the sun and the rain See the flowers grow I can see in front of me A yellow rose as pretty as can be So the seeds in the ground below Add the sun and the rain See the flowers Cousins gonna rock you in their arms, 
my birthday, my brother gave an insect to me. It had three parts to its petty thorax abdomen. On my birthday, my brother gave an insect to me. It had six hairy legs and three parts to its petty thorax abdomen. On my birthday, my brother gave an insect to me. It had two antenna, six hairy legs, and three parts to its petty thorax abdomen. On my birthday, my brother gave an insect to me. It had four fine wings, two antenna, six hairy legs, and three parts to its petty thorax abdomen. On my brother's birthday, I gave the insect back to him. It had four fine wings, two antenna, six hairy legs, and three parts to its body. Head, thorax, abdomen. Oh, you know what time it is. Welcome back to Nature Time. And this segment of the Nature Time. <laughs> We're going to talk about the hawk. That's right. And let's go. Let's go straight to a story about the hawk. This one's called The Hawks and Their Friends from Jataka Tales. The Hawks and Their Friends. A family of hawks lived on an island in a lake not far from the great forest. On the northern shore of this lake lived a lion, king of beasts. On the eastern shore lived a kingfisher. On the southern shore of the lake lived a turtle. Have you many friends near here? The mother hawk asked the father hawk. No, not one in this part of the forest, he said. You must find some friends. We must have someone who can help us if we are in danger or in trouble, said the mother hawk. With whom shall I make friends? asked the father hawk. With the kingfisher, who lives on the eastern shore, and the lion on the north, said the mother hawk. And with the turtle on the southern shore of this lake, the father hawk did so. One day, man hunted in the great forest from morning until night, but found nothing. Not wishing to go home empty-handed, they went to the island to see what they could find there. Let us stay here tonight, they said, and see what we can find in the morning. So they made beds of leaves for themselves and lay down to sleep. They had made their beds under the tree in which the hawks had their nest. But the hunters could not go to sleep because they were bothered by the flies and mosquitoes. At last the hunters got up and made a fire on the shore of the lake, so that the smoke would drive away the flies and mosquitoes. The smoke awoke the birds, and the young ones cried out, Did you hear that? said one of the hunters. That was the cry of birds. They will do very well for our breakfast. There are young ones in that nest. And the hunters put more wood on the fire and made it blaze up. Then the mother bird said to the father, These men are planning to eat our young ones. We must ask our friends to save us. Go to the kingfisher and tell him what danger we are in. The father hawk flew with all speed to the kingfisher's nest and woke him with his cry. Why have you come? asked the kingfisher. Then the father hawk told the kingfisher what the hunters planned to do. Fear not, said the kingfisher. I will help you. Go back quickly and comfort my friend your mate and say that I'm coming. So the father hawk flew back to his nest 
the kingfisher flew to the island and went into the lake near the place where the fire was burning while the father hawk was away one of the hunters had climbed up into the tree just as he neared the nest the kingfisher beating the water with his wings sprinkled water on the fire and put it out down came the hunter to make another fire when it was burning well he climbed the tree again once more the kingfisher put it out as often as the fire was made the kingfisher put it out midnight came and the kingfisher was now very tired the mother hawk noticed this and said to her mate the kingfisher is tired now go ask the turtle to help us so that the kingfisher may have a rest the father hawk flew down and said rest a while friend kingfisher i will go and get the turtle so the father hawk flew to the southern shore and wakened the turtle what is your errand friend asked the turtle danger has come to us said the father hawk and he told the turtle about the hunters the kingfisher has been working for hours and now he is very tired this is why i came to you the turtle said i will help you at once then the turtle went to the island where the hawk lived he dived into the water collected some mud and put out the fire with it then he lay still the hunter cried why should we bother to get the young hawks let us kill this turtle he will make a fine breakfast for all of us we must be careful or he will bite us let us throw a net over him and turn him over they had no nets with them so they took some vines and tore their clothes into strings and made a net but when they put the net all over the turtle they could not roll him over instead the turtle suddenly dived down into the deep water the men were so eager to get him that they did not let go of the net so down they went into the water as they came out they said have the night a kingfisher kept putting out our fires now we have torn our clothes and got all wet trying to get this turtle we will build another fire and at sunrise we will eat those young hawks and they began to build another fire the mother hawk heard them and said to her mate sooner or later this man will get our young go and tell our friend the lion at once the father hawk flew to the lion why do you come at this hour of the night asked the lion the hawk told him the whole story the lion said i will come at once go back and comfort your mate and the young ones soon the lion came roaring when the hunters heard the lion's roar they cried now we shall all be killed and away they ran as fast as they could go when the lion came to the foot of the tree not one of the hunters was to be seen then the kingfisher and the turtle came up and the hawk said you have saved us friends in need are friends indeed let's talk a little bit, bit about the hawk of all the birds of prey hawks are the most common you might have heard their screeching, echoing call, or seen them soaring high in the air. The red-tailed hawk is the most common in America. It has a reddish brown tail. Hawks are fierce hunters. They have good eyesight and can see prey from high in the sky. They dive down to catch rabbits, mice, lizards, fish, squirrels or snakes. Sometimes they perch from a tree or telephone pole and swoop down after prey. And the hawk is here to show us how to take the lead, to take action right now and not wait for someone else to do it because we are confident and capable now let's have a little listen to what a hawk sounds like in real life. Okay, here we go.
Wow. Did you hear that? Whoa, that's so cool. And now we have time just to move on with one little story. The Tiger and the Monkeys. Let's check this one out. The Tiger and the Monkeys by Mrs. Raffi. At the beginning of time, the animals were free and living wild and unruly lives. But there were so many disputes and quarrels that they convened a council to choose a king to reign over them. With one accord, they nominated the tiger to be king. Not for any special wisdom or merit which he possessed, but because of his great strength, by which he would be able to subdue the turbulent beasts. Although he possessed greater strength than any of his kindred, the tiger was more ignorant of the ways and habits of his subjects than any of the animals. He was so self-absorbed that he never troubled himself to study the ways of others, and this caused him to act very foolishly at times, and to make himself ridiculous, for the animals were tempted to take advantage of his great ignorance and to play tricks upon him whenever they thought they could do so undetected. This tale relates how the monkeys played a cunning trick on their king, which caused mortal enmity to spring up between him and them forever. One hot day, the tiger walked abroad to take an airing, but, the sun being so hot, he turned aside to shelter under some leafy trees, and there he fell asleep. Presently he awoke, and, on awaking, he heard it coming from overhead very melodious singing, to which he listened enraptured. It was the little insect, Shalaman, chirping on a leaf. But she was so small the tiger could not see her, and, being so ignorant, he had no idea whose voice it was. He peered to the branches right and left, trying to discover the singer, but he only saw a company of monkeys at play in the trees. So he began to question them, who it was that was singing above him. Now the monkeys and all the jungle animals were perfectly familiar with the singing of Shalaman, and recognized the voice from afar. They thought it very contemptible in the king to be more ignorant than themselves, and one audacious young monkey, in a spirit of mischief, answered that the singer was their youngest sister. The other monkeys were perturbed when they heard their brother giving such an impudent answer thinking that the tiger would be offended and would punish them with his great strength. They were preparing to run away when, to their amazement, they heard the tiger replying to their rash young brother in a gentle voice and with most affable manners and saying to him, You are my brother-in-law. Your sister has the most beautiful voice in the jungle. I will make her my wife. If the predicament of the monkeys was bad at the beginning, it was doubly so now, for they felt that, things having taken such an unexpected turn, it would be impossible to conceal from the knowledge of the tiger their brother's offense. They determined, however, not to desert the young culprit, and, if possible, to try and rescue him. So they approached the tiger, and with much seeming courtesy and honor, they put forward the excuse that their sister was very young and not yet of marriageable age. This excuse made no impression on the king, for he said, So much the better. As she is young, I can mold her to my own ways, and bring her up according to my own views, which would not be so easy if she were fully matured. To which the monkeys replied, Our sister is not amendable to instruction. She is indolent and fond of her own will. The tiger, however, was so lovesick that no argument had weight with him. He thought the brothers were severe in their judgment, and expressed his conviction that she could not be as slothful as they said, for she was foregoing her midday repose for the sake of making music to cheer the animals. He ordered them to come down from the trees and to lead their sister to him. After this, the monkeys feared to argue further, so they pretended to agree to his commands, but they craved a boon from him and asked for a little time to make preparations, as it would not be becoming for one of such a high degree to join himself with a poor family like theirs without showing him adequate honor, such as was due to his rank. This request the tiger granted, and it was arranged between them that he was to come and claim his bride at the time of the full moon, 
a week from that day, and so the tiger departed with evident good will. As soon as they found themselves alone, the monkeys began to think out some plans by which they could meet the situation and escape exposure. They decided to call together a council of the whole tribe of monkeys, for they well foresaw that the whole tribe would be in peril if the tiger found out what they had done. So the monkeys came to hold a council, and in that council it was decided that they must continue to keep up the duplicity begun. And in order to hoodwink the tiger still further, they planned to make a clay image after the fashion of a woman and to present her to the tiger as his bride. So they made preparations for a great feast, but they did not invite anybody except their own tribe to attend. During the succeeding days, the monkeys busied themselves collecting clay and molding it into an image, which they propped against a tree. They were unable to make the head of one piece with the body, so they molded the head separately, and when it was finished, they placed it loosely on the body of the image. Then they proceeded to dress the image in all the finery they could procure, and they carefully covered the head and face with a veil so as to hide it from the eyes of the bridegroom. The night of the full moon arrived, and all the monkey family were assembled at the appointed place, where, with much clatter and seeming joy, they awaited the arrival of the tiger, though they were really very anxious about the consequences. Everything was in readiness, and the place laid out with many kinds of food, so as to lead the tiger to think that they were sincere in their welcome. He came very early, very gorgeously arrayed, and carrying over his shoulder a net full of betel nut and pan leaves, and was received with loud acclamation by his prospective relatives. But the tiger hardly deigned to give them a greeting. So impatient was he to meet his bride, and he demanded to be taken to her immediately. The monkeys led him with great ceremony to the clay image, but their hearts were beating fast, with fear lest he should discover their fraud. When they reached the image, they said, This is our sister. Take her, and may she be worthy of the great honor you have conferred upon her. Thereupon they retired to a safe distance. When the tiger saw how finely dressed she was, and how modestly she had veiled herself, he felt a little timid, for she was so much finer than the little gray monkey he had been picturing to himself. He came up to her and said deferentially, as he slung the net of betel nut round her neck, You are the chief person at this feast. Take the pan and the betel nut, and divide them among the company according to custom. The bride, however, remained motionless and mute. Seeing which, the tiger asked the monkeys in a displeased voice, Why doth not your sister answer me, nor obey my commands? She is very young, they replied. Perhaps she has fallen asleep while waiting for you. Pull the string of the net, and she will awaken. Upon this, the tiger gave the string a sharp tug, and the loose head of the image rolled on to the floor, whereupon the monkeys, uttering the most piercing shrieks, pounced upon the tiger in a mob, declaring he had killed their sister, and that he had only made a pretense of marrying her in order to get a hold of her to kill her. A fierce and bloody fight ensued, in which the tiger was nearly killed, and ever since then the tiger has feared the monkeys, and they are the only animals in the jungle that dare challenge him to fight. He never discovered their duplicity, but he learned one very effective lesson, for he has never committed the indiscretion of proposing marriage with an unknown bride since that unfortunate affair with the monkeys. While the monkeys are rejoicing in the cunning by which they saved their brother and their tribe from punishment. We've got time for one little activity. We're going to stand like a tree because trees, they stick up for themselves. Because they're sticks that are up. <laughs> so that's why they stick up for themselves. And they're big and strong and very strong and resilient. All right. So we're going to take on some of that energy of the tree. So we get our strength inside ourselves and our self-esteem and our confidence. And so we can stick up for ourselves. So we stand up. 
stand up straight, put your shoulders back and your chest out like a big strong tree and stick your arms right out as far as you can go. Big branches of a tree. A big breath in. Big breath out. A big breath in. Breathing in all that strength that a tree has. Breathing right out and that's all you have to do. And trees are here to help you stick up for yourselves too. So if you're ever being bullied, think of the hawk, think of the monkeys in the story. Think of the swan in the last episode. And stick up for yourself. Don't let people push you around. Don't let people be mean to you. And if they are, you can let me know because I'll come and stick up for you. Take care. We'll see you at the next one. Bye.